so uh, I'll stop sharing. Let me know if you want me to share the screen. We don't have much audience. Let's wait uh, for some time. Sure, no problem. Uh, just, uh, just an, uh, just an introduction from my side. Am I able to? Am I uh, uh, clear? Is able? Uh, are you able to hear my voice? Yes, yes, very much. Yes, okay. very, very much. good. So, first of all, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, good to have you here in this uh, important cloud webinar. So, with me is uh, you know our uh, product manager who's Pranay, and also uh, the cloud expert Subhachandra is there. So, this. This webinar basically talks about our uh, expertise on the cloud computing and digital transformation and how this would be uh, enabling the enterprises world over to leverage these technologies and achieve their business success. This is the overall uh, 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 context. And of course, Shubha will explain you more on the technical side. So I'll hand over this to Shubha. Yeah, e, e, thank you. Uh, thank you, Pranay. Uh, thank you, Rajiv. And uh, thank you, uh, Devendra, for uh, setting up these, uh, you know, uh, setting up this session. And uh, yes, uh, let me share my screen. Uh, if you are able to see my screen, uh, let me know. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, let me start uh, a quick introduction about myself. Uh, my name is uh, Shubhachandra. I've been into solution architect, uh, basically cloud capability uh, for almost uh, five years now. Started my career with IBM Cloud uh, on the cloud specifically. Uh, then uh, later moved to other cloud. Uh, as we uh, are, you know, we are a multi, as uh, this today's market uh, is a more on you know, multi-cloud. It's not specific to one cloud. Uh, so multi-cloud is what is required in today's market, and uh, we, as an uh, you know Reliant Vision, uh, we here uh, uh, give you the multi-cloud resources and multi-cloud capabilities. So we can operate in uh, uh, almost all the clouds in the today's leaders, starting from Google, AWS, Azure, Oracle, IBM, and Alibaba. And uh, we uh, do have expertise on the other, uh, you know, other cloud as well. But these are the leading uh, cloud uh, providers in market, and uh, we show our capabilities and expertise on these cloud market. And uh, uh, as uh, in this session, uh, we are going to talk about uh, the introduction to the cloud, how the cloud uh, that makes a difference in today's market, and. Uh, uh, we'll see who are the leading cloud providers in market uh, based on uh, the measurement of what uh, organization like Gartner, uh, uh, you know, captures and uh, provide that insights uh, based on the ability to execute and the completeness of a vision, uh, who are the leaders in market and uh, who, where the other cloud providers uh, provide. It's not, uh, if you talk about cloud computing, uh, we just don't only see the infrastructure as a service, we do see uh, the development, uh, you know, uh, the, de uh, the development environment, the application migration, or uh, maybe any aspects uh, from an, uh, big data analytics to artificial intelligence, where each of the cloud uh, services or cloud providers or major players they stand in today's market. Uh, so we'll see a Gartner report on, and uh, we'll I'll take you to some of the websites uh, where these Gartner reports have been published, and uh, we can uh, know that. Where, the, where does each cloud provider stand? Uh, later, uh, we are going to talk about, uh, you know, yes, we are going to talk about uh, uh, how do you develop your applications on the cloud? What makes it uh, uh, that uh, accessible? What makes it that uh, attractive uh, for customers? The reason behind is you go with the open source market today. Uh, why are this open source market? You know, 70% of world's uh, cloud infrastructure is an open source market uh, where it will be, if I go and choose an open source market or open governance model, it will be easy for me to migrate uh, uh, whichever platform I want to, or I want to migrate back to my uh, on-premises. So develop and run application using open source and other software without your operational stuff. Okay, that is what C. Uh, then we'll see some of the use cases uh, like uh, uh, your modernizing infrastructure, 
uh, how do you, uh, you know, modernize your applications? What are the various use cases and benefits of choosing uh, cloud, uh, uh, cloud computing uh, or uh, your workloads migrating to cloud? Then we also see some of the database services, uh, database uh, workloads, uh, what the cloud provide the capability. When you talk about cloud capability, it provides, uh, you know, uh, it provides uh, that new set of, uh, you know, database available in market. So we might heard about traditionally uh, uh, database services like relational database services. You might heard about NoSQL database services. There's something concept called uh, uh, new SQL, where it support both your uh, transactional and analytics uh, uh, capabilities on the cloud. So we'll see that, uh, what are the data analytics capabilities and what are the leading uh, you know, technologies in market and, uh, and the cloud AI, artificial intelligence. Uh, that is what, these are the two uh, opportunities where the business is going towards where most of the business, be it an enterprise, be it an, uh, major companies, be it an, uh, you know, any organization, or there are organizations which have started scratch uh, on the cloud itself, like startups and all. Okay, they are at this position today because they work on that data using that AI. Uh, they are able to meet that uh, business need or your customer needs in market. So all that, uh, you should be able to take decision and these decisions are taken by AI based on the data what they have. So we are, should be able to do uh, data analytics and better take the uh, no, take better decisions so we can serve our customers so we can serve our business requirement into this market. So uh, let's see some of the industries uh, uh, across a spectrum. Uh, you can say banking industry, health industry, uh, financial industry, uh, banking and commercial market industry, uh, your government organization, uh, where they are uh, standard, uh, where they have currently moved uh, uh, to, to, to today's market. Uh, you might heard about, you know, uh, so one of the biggest deal, uh, uh, the Google Cloud uh, has been, uh, you know, a biggest deal in today's era as a 10 billion, uh, you know, US, uh, US 10 billion deal with a Deutsche Bank, okay. Uh, that's a Deutsche Bank, uh, uh, that's an investment banking, as well as they have won the 10 billion deem to move their infrastructure to uh, your cloud power over a period of, uh, you know, over a period of uh, 10 years. And you also other financial services which are moved to cloud uh, following the leader, that is a Deutsche Bank. And uh, other cloud providers like HSBC, if you take an example, uh, they are today's number one in uh, cloud uh, migration, or you can say uh, they have 30% of their assets in cloud now. So they are using 30% of, uh, that's, uh, that's the highest in any uh, banking environment, uh, they have it. So we'll, we'll talk such kind of an uh, uh, industry insights uh, when we come there and we see some of the examples. Okay, so later we'll have an Q&A session where if you have any specific uh, need or requirement, uh, we can address that with our expertise here on the panel. Okay, so then, uh, so what does usually cloud computing, uh, cloud computing means? Uh, we are just starting with very basic, but I'll not talk basic here. I'll actually talk about, uh, so this is what, uh, when you say a cloud computing, uh, and then when you say a cloud computing, where it is standing today, okay? Uh, so we start with, uh, we start with uh, your on-demand self-service. We don't need a much of a staff to manage the cloud, okay? Because most of your services, what you want on the cloud are self-service. You just go to the catalog and you use their, uh, you know, uh, use their buttons or use their scripts to provision the resources and is ready, ready within minutes or seconds. Then comes the cloud resources can be accessible anywhere on the internet, uh, be it your laptop, be it your mobile. So management or on internet quite easy and it's a broad network access what we have. The cloud resources are broad, broad network access. Then we have resource pooling. As we all know that uh, Google uh, or AWS or Azure, okay, they have spread across multiple regions throughout the globe and they have data centers. And these data centers, we have number of network devices, storage devices, uh, your uh, racks, uh, servers, 
bare metals etc and when you when a customer asks to uh, when a person uh, demands a resource and these resources are provisioned on those shared resources okay or some of the organization also require an sole tenancy sole tenancy means they want a dedicated resource only for them that also is being provided on the cloud so i'm just want to make a note that so these resources are a resource pooling so the resources are shared and a, a huge amount of resources you see in this data center so that makes the rapid elasticity that makes uh, the easy scalable part uh, based on the demand okay maybe you are a retail company and you have a high demand of resources when you have a black friday okay uh, or a holiday season starts you have high demand of uh, resource because most of the customer hit your websites or uh, you yeah are you able to hear me yeah uh, okay yes yeah, thank you so uh, as you need an elastic uh, resource a uh, cloud is the best place to uh, scale your resources and uh, answer your customers okay so then uh, it's it's also uh, the resource what you use you only pay for that okay you don't upfront invest something it's not capital expenditure more about it's an operational expenditure okay with a minimal operational expenditure you can move your workload to cloud and you only pay for what you use for example you use a resource like your virtual machines or your hardware cpu powers computing powers you only pay per second basis in most of the cloud okay and you you are you are you're hosting your data you are uh, storing your data on a cloud you only pay per gb per month okay or you or you interact with the cloud you'll be paying only for egress charges whereas the ingress charges are free of cost means the customer uh, uh, is only going to pay when his uh, customers download the resources rather than when the customers upload the resources you don't be charged so uh, most of the services what you use in a cloud are paid services are uh, most of the resources what you use only pay as you go model so these are some of the characteristics of the cloud based on these characters you can categorize the cloud in many uh, this thing like infrastructure as a service platform as a service and you have uh, your software as a service whereas uh, when it comes to traditional on premises most of the things is handled by the customer when it comes to cloud when you say infrastructure as services a uh, customer is only responsible to uh, demand an operating system and manage everything above from the operating system so the underlying infrastructure will be handled by the cloud provider then comes uh, your uh, platform as a services where many of the startups let's take an example of a uh, you have uh, spotify you have snapchat you have uh, many of those uh, startup companies are they are built on the cloud okay if you ask me down the line of 10 15 years back uh, if there were so many ideas but less startups because cloud was not that successful at that time but nowadays if you see most of the startups are built on this cloud and they are very successful because they have to pay very less uh, for their initial workloads and they scale as their business grows okay so that is what we have okay here is one <clears throat> report the next uh, line item what we have here is a cloud leaders uh, it's not that why i'm showing here cloud leader uh, coming back to our first slide we are expertise on these clouds okay beat in the market so google aws azure oracle ibm and alibaba and these are the leaders in market when we talk about various sectors so there's organization called as gartner which actually uh, provide these details like they will tell they will uh, segregate the uh, uh, vendors as per niche players uh, visionaries leaders and challenges uh, and i uh, we have captured uh, various uh, Uh, metrics so let's say who is uh, in who is uh, actually a leader or a challenger or visionary in infrastructure and a platform we see that it's uh, these three cloud providers so amazon microsoft google okay alibaba oracle and these are some of the niche players mm -hmm. so again uh, let's other 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 aspects you when you uh, when you talk about cloud ai developer service artificial intelligence service we'll see who are the 
Okay, so in C, we say if you see uh, AI developers, we'll see who are there, and then we can also go here. Who are the other players in market? So when you talk about a cloud database management system, uh, again, AWS is one of the leaders, Microsoft followed by Google, Oracle, IBM, and these are some of the leaders, and there are some niche players who are competing in the market. Then uh, we have this uh, uh, 2021 Gartner uh, Magic Quadrant for uh, data services and machine learning. So who are popular in the market? If you see, uh, this is some of the report of a Gartner. Okay, so where we talk about machine learning platforms, uh, Google has its own place uh, in bed because they're very well versed in uh, the machine learning platform what they have. So with these, uh, uh, why customer need to go to the cloud? The reason behind us to take the advantage of these particular uh, you know, new area of opportunities like big data analytics and machine learning, AI, artificial intelligence workload. And here is a right, uh, right uh, uh, platform for you that's a cloud which can scale as per the requirement and it can uh, build the models as per the requirement. So here is our insights. Uh, we, as an uh, you know, are we, uh, we, we, uh, we do provide expertise on most of the cloud in today's market. Okay, almost all the clouds in today's market. Uh, then comes your OpenStack. Okay, why this particular slide? If you ask me, uh, like if you say, seventy percent of cloud market is on OpenStack today. Okay. Uh, OpenStack beyond uh, your infrastructure as a service, uh, consider your platform as a SaaS service. So these services are built on this OpenStack. Let's say example of a machine learning. Machine learning is built using a TensorFlow. TensorFlow is an open source model again. Uh, if you ask me uh, uh, why Google is so good in machine learning, uh, big data analytics, or their workloads, why they are fast in nature, because most of their workload, they run it on a containerization. Containerization using Kubernetes. Okay, Kubernetes, again, is an open source model. When you say Kubernetes, uh, if you say about Google itself, run around 4 billion containers in every day on their uh, environment. For their workloads, they use 4 billion uh, containers. So, and all these resources are API managed, all managed through an API application program interface, which makes automation easy by using tools like Terraform, Chef, Puppet, Ansible, okay? So these are something API. So provisioning of the resources become easier, okay? You can create environments within seconds to minutes. You require a development environment, you require a testing environment, you require a production environment, it will be created and destroyed within minutes using API-based tools like Terraform, one of the popular used in market. We expertise in Terraform, we expertise in Ansible, we expertise in Chef and Puppet, also today's leading things in market. And if you see, uh, the, again, you want a plat, uh, you want a platform as a service, you want to go with, uh, you want to go with the environment where developer can leverage cloud capability without worrying the underlying infrastructure, you have services like Cloud Foundry, which can help you to do this. All these are provisioned on the infrastructure that are you know, software-defined data centers, software-defined networking, software-defined compute, software-defined storage, all that we have in market. So all are built using OpenStack SDKs as well as your horizontal web UI, you have it. So just to give that, what makes OpenStack or open governance, open uh, source uh, tools and services, it is easy for us to migrate our workloads from one cloud to another cloud. Let's say a customer is keen in working on AWS, but after that he finds it Google Cloud more, uh, more attractive and cheaper and economical. We can easily migrate your workload if it's on Kubernetes, Cloud Foundry, easily you can migrate a workload from AWS to uh, your GCP. Uh, later, you see that due to some uh, government regulations, you want to go back to your on-premises. These open source tools, open stack models help you to go back to your on-premises without much, much a problem or much a data change or a code change. Okay, easily migration will happen here. <clears throat> so 
public cloud uh, leverages on the 70 plus open stack powered public cloud data centers okay so here uh, on premises also you can uh, provide these resources so it'll easy for us to migrate okay then comes our cloud uh, some of our uh, cloud innovations or you can say uh, why what benefits we get it from cloud let's categorize with some of the uh, use cases uh, that are highly demanding some of the use cases uh, that require high computing powers and we'll try how that we solve easily on the cloud here is one computing called as high performance computing so when you say high performance containing the jobs of the workload that are executed for hours they're executed on very large scale machines or a large scale uh, cpu and memory where the job runs to you know uh, the job runs to weeks to months or maybe uh, several uh, days okay so such job case uh, sub use case what we do a reporting analytics maybe any of these we try to run it on a uh, cloud or a high performing machines when you say high performing machines you need a lot of investment okay you need a lot of capital uh, expenditure and that becomes a challenging task when you work in an enterprise because there's a lot of approvals required the lot of machines administrators and a lot of customization required where you can build, build a high performance computing so it also uh, it also tedious or you can see it always a, always a challenging if you want to scale any high performance computing so in case of cloud you build that high performing machine okay like in uh, if you take an example of an aws it gives you up to so many multiple cores okay up to 48 cores on a single machine if you if you talk about uh, gcp it will give you up to uh, one uh, more than 224 uh, cores uh, virtual cpus on a, uh, on a for a particular virtual machine or right. we can have that so you have that much amount of highly uh, high skilled machine you can create the machine run your workloads and when you have a idle time you can just give up the resources by deleting those machines. Again, you use, if you want again to run a job, again, you can create a new cluster to run a new job. So what I say, reduce queue time for the large bad jobs workload, what you have here in a cloud. You pay only for what you need, okay? You pay only for what you need and innovate with a high performance on demanding resources. So if you say your banking environment, you have risk analysis, which required a high performance computing and it is done by uh, your HPC on Google Cloud. Any of the algorithms like Carlo Monto algorithm require uh, high performance for workload like risk analysis, et cetera, in a investment banking environment. <clears throat> then, uh, then we have, uh, then we have a cloud infrastructure modernization solution. Okay, so again, coming back to that, we talk about application migration okay so what's the benefit if i move my application to the cloud okay one is uh, you will be using a, a less expensive okay uh, refresh cycles you can take advantage and benefit of most advanced DevOps tools in today's market okay and moving to cloud they can also use uh, advanced functionality of databases advanced capabilities of AI and uh, big data analytics over a cloud. So you have application migrations where you can take these benefits. Okay, so it's again on a cloud, it is a greater user and customer satisfaction with improved app performance, okay? Because you can scale as per the requirement. Uh, you can also add uh, several tiers of security, app security that includes uh, the data encryption in flight as in transit, uh, the flight as in transit, as well as data encryption at rest. And you can also talk about security like DDoS attacks, uh, protection against DDoS attacks, and uh, uh, protection uh, against your intrusions. All that you can uh, do it with the various uh, cloud securities available. So every cloud provide a list of uh, tools for security where you can secure your data, where you secure a workload and you can use this. So one benefit of using a cloud, you can start 
you know, uh, it uses the cheaper cycles. You can start developing, testing your application on a cloud and you can test your application with the real data and you can roll out changes quickly using a cloud developer tools and uh, you have to ro roll out changes to, uh, to production within no time. Okay, your re release, release cycles can be short here and you can use any of the agile methodology or DevOps principle where you can work on customer feedbacks, work on, uh, you know, uh, work on uh, uh, application uh, improvement uh, within no time because your application migration and your application uh, uh, DevOps processes quite uh, great here in cloud provider, cloud environment. So each of the cloud uh, comes with their own set of tools to provision these uh, set of series of tools for their uh, migration plus your DevOps and so on. Okay. So when it comes to your storage, okay, uh, you see uh, what is the most uh, expensive part in any enterprise, any organization, any financial and banking or commercial market is that uh, your data, okay? Managing your data, storing your data, backing up your data, and at the, la at the later, after any uh, tech refresh, how you sanitize your data, okay? These are some of the aspects where uh, it will be a costlier affair in on-premises, okay? Which becomes more, uh, more uh, easier in the cloud because as I told you, the backup activity the encryption activity, the sanitizing activity will all come in a SLA of a cloud provider. So backup, uh, usually a cloud will give you SLA, which says you about okay, a service level agreement, which will say you, your backup is almost 99.99919, okay, durable, okay, and it gives you uh, availability with the various uh, SLAs but always it is 99.999, that is 11.9 durables in any cloud provider market. So it can easily integrate with any of your uh, backup and disaster recovery strategy. Okay, you can uh, bring in your own backup recovery software to take a backup and store it in the cloud. So these, uh, uh, these data which are stored will automatically replicate, encrypt and managed uh, within the cloud. And some cloud also give you a agreement with a proper data sanitization once it reaches its, uh, you know, the time. Once it reaches its period, automatically data has to be deleted. Then comes, uh, <clears throat> so uh, the scaling. So how big is the cloud? Cloud can go up to petabyte scale or internet scale, okay? Uh, you can store as much data you provide on the cloud and you only pay for the amount of data you store on the cloud. Okay, how easy is to add a disk to the VMs? It's quite easy. Okay, it's easy, scalable, economical uh, for the VMs and to take a backup of the VMs and databases also quite easy here in cloud provider, clouds. So <clears throat> then uh, extend backup usage from ransomware recovery test and dev and analytics, all that benefits you can find it. And on a cloud, a cloud backup and disaster recovery has become even easier and you can always reduce your RPO, RTO uh, by using a cloud here. So again, what are other things benefits? Okay. Companies today are confronted with the challenge of balancing security and IT resources with demands of remote work. Okay. You have virtual desktop is the answer. Uh, let's say uh, I run for, I am I'm, I'm, I'm employed with the bank and uh, I run my workload, which are very uh, sensitive. I use a certain application, which has to be only installed on authorized devices. I cannot install those services and tools on, on any of these, those services and tools. I cannot install it on any of the any of the machines only authorized devices then instead of uh, uh, authorizing each employed devices we can allocate them a virtualized desktop a virtual desktop where they access it over a cloud and all the tools and services which are required for the banking application will be installed and accessible on a 
uh, remote desktop by using those uh, uh, virtual desktops what we have here. So enabling secure and scalable access to corporate resources can help your business moving forward. Then comes what are the benefits here? So how do you how do you authorize the devices? Okay, we have various uh, things like you have Active Directory. If you're using an Azure, you'll have Azure Active Directory, which will help you to Microsoft 365 will help you to authorize devices and resources. If you're using Google, Google has Google Workspace, uh, which will help you to authorize users, devices, and workspace. Okay. Similarly, there are many ADs available in market and uh, you can take advantages of those ADs to, uh, to manage your users resources on cloud. Then comes your high performance virtual desktop partners we have. You might heard about Citrix, you might heard about uh, other player who provide those, uh, those this, they also can easily provision those virtual desktop on these clouds. Uh, okay, we also can integrate with these uh, uh, partners and uh, provide you that virtual desktops. Uh, being on cloud, it increase business agility by migrating and replatforming apps to the cloud. Uh, it increases your business uh, uh, agility also. So uh, this is one of the examples of an infrastructure modernization. And now uh, there are specialized workloads that has to be on a, a particular hardware requirement. Okay, let's take an example of mainframes. Mainframes require a specific hardware. They are not yet in cloud. We cannot move that workload in the cloud. So, okay, that's a high-end machine. What about the small mid-range servers like AIX? or you have a mid-range server uh, it's like AS400 or HP boxes or HP blade servers, Dell blade servers. Okay, let's say there are specific operating system will only go with specific hardware. Okay, so uh, like legacy system, like you know, they have workload like AIX and AWS can only be deployed on a specific, only be deployed on a uh, specific hardware, you can bring in a specialized workload to cloud on a bare metal solutions. Okay, so one more example. Now you want to have your own cloud ecosystem and you want to build your own cloud ecosystem, you will make use of a VMware. If you want to create a VMware, you need a physical boxes. And uh, let's say I want 10 physical boxes, 20 physical boxes with a high-end configuration because I want to be a cloud provider in market. I'll build my VMware EXI uh, vCloud on, uh, on, on any of the cloud provider market. We can make use of a bare metals. Okay, so uh, bare metals will give that high-end machine which can be used to build your own workload, to build your own uh, uh, specific uh, solution, you know, specific requirement of an uh, hardware. And in that case, uh, you with the minimal latency, you can use a high-end machines on a bare metal where your virtual machines does not meet your requirements. You can go with a bare metal. It's just like having a box on the cloud. You have a box or a rack system on your premises. You can have a box or a rack system on go on any of these cloud providers in market. Specific, specifically, your uh, uh, Azure, Google, AWS, and your IBM provide these kind of a services. Okay, benefit sort. Uh, it is flexibility and agility for specialized workload, and it's all subscription pricing. And we uh, we as an uh, Reliant Vision will also expertise on these handling and managing these resources. Okay, now comes uh, a data uh, data center migration. So most of our business uh, till date or prior five to 10 years run uh, the workloads in our own data centers. Okay, now most of the activity what is happening in today's market, they are migrating to cloud. They are migrating to cloud. Uh, here are some examples. So one we have the one of the approach of migrating to cloud will be lift and shift. So the machine or the virtual machine as it is in your as it is uh, you have on your uh, local uh, as it you have it on your uh, on premises you can move that virtual machine on the cloud by using an approach called as lift and shift. Or you can think about an application which has to be completely revamped or it has to be replatformed. We can think about an application from a Linux is moved to an application 
on the containerization or i can say it has to be totally uh, refactored uh, or replatformed reflat refactored or replatformed for example a mainframe application uh, has to be completely moved to cloud based or cloud native application so what are the solutions we have we expertise in these we can assess your workloads we can analyze your workload we can uh, you know give a report uh, what what uh, what approach you do require you do you require a lift shift refactor or replatform approach or we we keep it our workload in on premises itself and using a hybrid approach okay hybrid approach by various ways we can do it we can connect securely to a hybrid environment using a vpn connectivity or you can use an your direct uh, uh, direct interconnect or we have a various way to partner interconnect where you can connect your on premises with a cloud platform so and this when you migrate you migrate your data the data migration should be secure we make sure that your data is uh, confident uh, your data is securely moved to the cloud grow confidently on our purpose built infrastructure uh, on any of the cloud providers we help you to assess analyze and lift your uh, lift and shift your cloud on the market so modernize at your own pace uh, you don't need to hurry up okay so this is where the most of the organization today are failing their cloud journey or a cloud roadmap okay they they choose a cloud with all they do is they do what are their financial benefits what are their growth and they look at the they all do that and they want some magic to happen from moving their workload from on premises to cloud within weeks or months no that's that's now that's not, that's not how it's going to happen so there's a process involved it's a longer process okay we should properly analyze assess your workloads okay uh, uh, tester uh, means uh, suggest a advisor a suitable solution test the solution and we move in a various approach one we can do an uh, staggered approach or we can go with a uh, one time approach okay so most of the success stories are with a staggered approach over a period of 6 months 1 year 2 year 5 years okay even the banking and were like like hsbc it took almost 2 3 years to move their 30% of that asset to the cloud uh, even when you talk about deutsche bank it is actually taking 10 years road map and moving to the cloud they're not in a hurry so most of the clients customers won't be in a hurry because it's unknown uh, uh, territory as of now and we 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 suggest a solution we move it in a stag staggered approach that's what we also recommend okay so modernization solution your data center migration uh, will be more other staggered approach or a one time approach okay so how <clears throat> okay so what we we do here an intelligent operation with active assist we assist so that you can do a better and save lot on a cloud we assess you uh, with very various portfolio of tools that use data intelligence and machine learning to reduce your cloud complexity and administrative toil uh, making it easy to optimize your cloud security performance and cost okay so these are much required the reason behind us okay uh, uh, we also have our own set of tools but usually we dependent on the the cloud provider tools a okay, cloud provider tools like for example in uh, aws and azure we have something called as advisor which will uh, tell you the vulnerabilities it will tell you the cost optimization which will tell you security settings okay where are the loopholes and we have in google something called as recommender which will tell you right sizing of your virtual machine right sizing of your workload uh, all that aspects okay so the the, uh, the ultimate goal here is to save uh, save lot on the cloud expenditure okay and run optimized workload on a cloud meeting all the security compliance and uh, regulatory requirements for your workload okay we assess we analyze we deploy we test uh, we audit and we suggest recommend uh, the proper right size proper uh, security setting proper so that we can easy you can have that active assist in place where you can improve your cloud with a proactive alerts on the potential gap or future issues 
find the ideal performance to cost balance and automatic recommendations, drive innovation by reducing administrative time and labor, what we have in a cloud infrastructure modernization solutions. So those were some of our, uh, those were some of your infrastructure modernization, uh, starting with your high performance computing as an example, application migration, backup and recovery, virtual desktops, uh, bare metal solutions, data center migration, and your active assist. Okay, so these are very uh, fewer subset of the advantages what we, uh, when we migrate to a cloud, there are a lot more in the bucket we can always uh, we can always uh, venture that uh, with that journey with us uh, on a cloud platform then comes your application modernization this is something uh, you you or the developers will actually uh, more interested as a keen here okay so one what is a popular approach in today's market in any of the major enterprise major major businesses is a hybrid approach hybrid approach or a multi-cloud application platform. So what do you mean by hybrid approach? Hybrid approach, see some, uh, you can immediately cannot move your data on a cloud platform or you cannot move the data in a cloud platform at all. Why? The reason because uh, government regulations, compliance requirement, the data has to be hosted in your data centers. What about the application? Application can be on a cloud, but how do application access your data? Either a, a secure connectivity, secure gateway, VPN, direct interconnect, what, what not, okay? All that security comes into place. Uh, they, uh, these security are into considerations and we use a hybrid or a multi-cloud approach uh, where we can build, deploy, and optimize applications anywhere simply uh, flexible and securely with Google Cloud consistent development or AWS Cloud consistent development and operation experience for hybrid and multi-cloud environment. Okay, so this is what the demand of today's market. Not only high, uh, not only you say uh, hybrid, it should be also multi-cloud. The reason behind this. So all uh, cloud comes their own advantage. If you take me, what is the advantage of an Azure cloud? They are very good in security. They are very good in application security, micro segment security, or they are very good in these aspects. Okay. So a bit, uh, they are into enterprise solutions. They are, uh, Azure is really good into enterprise solutions. Uh, if you say, uh, uh, if you say fire, fire, how do you rate Azure as a security in terms of security five out of five? I would say five, four point five. Azure can meet that security. How about Google, AWS, and the cloud? They are 4.3, 4.2 in the market. But yes, that's my analysis. Now the number what I'm saying 4.54, it's my analysis. I'm telling they are good in market, but a par ahead will be uh, Azure. And if you talk about big data and analytics, uh, uh, if you take on machine learning, who is good in market? If you see Google cloud provider is artificial intelligence, machine learning, they're way ahead in market. Okay, so that's one example. Now later, later we talk about you know, so how you are using a, a multi-cloud approach or an hybrid approach. Okay, because we can build or modernize apps anywhere. Okay, that is one strength of using multi-cloud and hybrid. Consistent development and operational experience across hybrid and uh, multi-cloud. Across hybrid and multi-cloud. Uh, because we can easily move our workload from one environment to another environment using uh, open stack and open governance, open source uh, resources and services. Then leverage a declarative approach to manage policies across environment. If you ask me the products that can use to manage multi-cloud environment, we have products in Google, something called as Anthos. Anthos, uh, Anthos help you to apply a centralized network policy and security policy at on a Google Cloud platform where you can apply security and network policies across multiple uh, 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 multi-cloud or on-premises Kubernetes environment. Okay, so that is, uh, this is a high demand. Uh, this is the current, uh, uh, eye catcher in today's market that is application model uh, that is uh, hybrid and multi cloud application platform. If you ask me uh, something of workload like you know uh, data warehousing, 
uh, which is the popular products in market. If you talk from Google, it will be BigQuery. If you talk from um, uh, AWS, it will be uh, your Redshift. Uh, if you talk from uh, other tools like uh, Snowflake, Snowflake is the one which is popular in market, competes with product like Redshift and uh, BigQuery. As uh, the customer is satisfied more with Snowflake, you can make use of a Snowflake on today's market, but you can still keep your applications on your respective clouds. Okay, so that's how the strength of your hybrid and multi-cloud goes hand in hand. Leverage and declarative approach of managing policies is one of the examples I did explain on uh, Anthos is one of the highlighted products and is a one of a kind and is one of the highlighted uh, product in market. Then we have, okay, so yeah. Then we have cloud native uh, development. So uh, leverage any of the cloud, AWS, Google, or Azure, okay, leverage cloud, uh, uh, Google Cloud end-to-end -end platform to accelerate your developer productivity, simplifies operation and build security and compliance into your software delivery process. So uh, now if you see the journey of the cloud, now it all started with virtualization, okay? Uh, before virtualization, uh, people used to, uh, you know, uh, leverage machines on a particular data center. There were data centers like IBM data center, CIFI data center, and uh, people used to host their uh, data, host their uh, servers on their real estate. Okay, but the network power is to manage by the vendor, and he is to give an SLA, so there will be no network outrage. Neither there will be an, uh, you know, power outrage in his data center. Later, it moved that uh, to an uh, virtual machines where virtualization came in picture where vendor used to have a bigger box or an entire solution uh, where the customer used to request for virtual machines. From there, it all started now. It's a serverless approach. What is a serverless approach? You just go and submit the job or you just go and host your application, your underlying infrastructure, your uh, your underlying infrastructure, your network, your power, your storage, this all will be taken care by whom? The vendor. So, so you can focus uh, uh, or you can speed up with reliability and security. You focus on the code rather than the infrastructure. Okay, then you reduce risk and open uh, uh, with open source technology. So you're not you're not okay with Google Cloud at this point. You can easily move to AWS or uh, Azure or on-premises back if you're using open source technologies. Okay, so that is what uh, leveraging your cloud native application gives an upper hand when you talk about application modernization. So. Uh, <clears throat> as I was explaining previously, application development and delivery with serverless. The era is today is serverless. Serverless means what? You're only responsible for deploying your code. Everything will be managed by your cloud provider. Like everything means what? Encryption of a data, backup of a data, installation of services, uh, load balancing of your services, scaling of your services, and all these things will be handled by the cloud provider. Okay, so some of the services are called as managed services. Suppose, uh, let's say I want to run a uh, big data workload. I require one Hadoop and Spark cluster. If I say Hadoop and Spark cluster, if I want to set up that environment in my on-premises, I'll bring up servers. I'll install Linux operating system on top of that service. I'll then I will, uh, after Linux operating system on that service, what I'll do, I'll install the required packages of Hadoop. Uh, this this overall, the business uh, will take up to uh, three to four days, or it may be uh, the overall installation, configuration, managing will take at least a week time, okay, with that many amount of servers. What happens in a cloud like AWS, Azure, when you, when you configure an EMR, or you configure in a data proc in a Google Cloud, okay, data proc in a Google Cloud. Okay, so what, what I'm saying this names, if you just want to compare, so most of the cloud providers will be using, uh, you know, here if you see, most of the cloud providers will be using same terms and technology, okay, uh, uh, but only the name changes. For example, I was, right now I was talking about uh, what, your big data and analytics, 
yeah, your big data you have it here so when you say big data emr what we call it here in aws in azure is called hd insights in google it will be called as data proc in ibm it is called analytical engine in oracle it's called oracle big data services alibaba it's called you know uh, e uh, map reduce services if you see almost the same workload which runs good in your on premises can workload in all this cloud okay so uh, that is what if you want to bring up these uh, big data uh, cluster on your premises it, it will take a week time but in case of these cloud providers these uh, this complex uh, environment are created within seconds to minutes in case of data proc it will take only it will take average of 90 seconds to create a cluster of any size where the installation of your hadoop spark pig hive or big data will be created in seconds okay that's what the power of the cloud it's a managed service it is built using api templates it is built using redeployable templates in today's market okay so apart from that you have concept of serverless serverless means what as i told you if you just submit a job that is good enough to uh, run, to execute your job and get the output okay so a uh, google cloud serverless computing platform abstract uh, away all infrastructure management by automatically scaling up increasing more number of instances scaling down reducing reducing the instances when it is not required and in some of the cases like application servers like app engine it will scale to zero okay where if you have a idle time you will not be paying anything because you are uh, no resources running for that application at the time of when it is idle when any a new uh, new new um, a request come to the same application it automatically provision that resource which are required for that application and instantly it will add that resources depending on the traffic it can scale up and down and even scale to zero when uh, when you go with the serverless approach of many of the cloud providers okay so increase speed to market okay S simplify developer experience automate uh, event orchestrations when you use uh, something called as serverless approach so what is uh, today's way of developing an application we talk about a philosophy of devops where the better collaboration of developers and operations required to build any product so your product is well uh, uh, well received by a customer or the changes is the feedback are well received by the developers qa team and uh, operations teams so better collaboration and uh, uh, between the developers qa team Uh, testers is required so use a approach called as agile methodology devops methodology 12 factor app methodology okay for that for that we require series of tools for example if you are using continuous integration we require a git tool git tool is various developer collaborate together and they start pushing the changes based on the customer feedback and announcement request so these changes has to be automatically deployed to the workload we use tools like jenkins build spinnaker wicker and so on we use it built or so on we use it okay so these tools are well available on on okay so it's well available on uh, your uh, cloud okay <clears throat> yeah so some of the questions i have just seen now yeah okay i think devendra is answering it thank you uh, so you have this tools uh, easily configurable on the uh, on this uh, cloud uh, this thing if you see uh, some of the tools which are available on a devops perspective you can see a lot of tools are provided by each uh, uh, let's go for develop devops here every cloud provider will actually give those tools and services see so your devops tool if you see on uh, uh, aws there are numerous number of devops tools azure your google cloud ibm oracle and so on okay so that's what uh, these devops tools are well available well config well built on this cloud market so it is easy to set up environments also so what is the main need of a developer he can create an environment he can test his application and he can roll out his application to the production and he'll delete those environments which are not needed to save the cost 
okay these are easily done by developing tools you can create environments using an um, tools like chef puppet ansible devops uh, ansible devops tools okay and uh, terraform is popularly used we expertise in terraform where you can build environment uh, in all the cloud provider is a common tool where you can develop and build environment for aws azure uh, gcp and other major clouds <clears throat> So Devinder has this question, is there something which can't be done in a cloud and still need traditional workloads? Some of the workloads are still not in a cloud. Like example, like airways, airway industry are totally banking on mainframes for the booking, uh, for the booking and other things. So uh, airways, airways is one industry I hardly see because they're purely, they're highly reliable on uh, your mainframe machines and still they are not in the cloud. Okay, some of the QA sessions, I just keep it at the last. Uh, uh, okay, I'll, I'll take your questions at the last. Thank you. So this is, uh, when I was telling about the application modernization, I was always, I, I, I promoted an activity called as staggered approach. So what do you mean by staggered approach? Okay, you move in a phase, phase by phase. You don't immediately move your workload to the cloud. You need to, uh, you have a monolith application, you break down the functionality into microservices and you're going to move one service at a time to a cloud, okay? You are satisfied, you move slowly to the entire your application to the cloud. So if you're using API management, accelerate application design and development, okay? So that too, API is a new way of uh, building your application where the functionality is provided by Asian uh, API where Google, provides that functionality where you can develop your applications on a Google Cloud Platform, use that open API specification to publish and uh, to publish your applications using API and those APIs can be cloud on a hybrid environment. Or example, uh, let's take an example, Google, uh, AWS is good in, you know, let's say Beanstalk or any of the particular workload. Azure is good in .NET and uh, Google is good at something uh, uh, Cloud Foundry uh, for an example. And, and you want to take the uh, advantage of the specialization by each cloud. So you develop your application in multi-cloud, okay? Uh, one service at one cloud, the other service in other cloud, and combinedly you can take the leverage and benefit of those uh, using an API management or API management tools and services. So API management gives you extend the life of legacy application with API abstractions. Manage uh, services, including microservices as APIs. Okay, bring new application to market faster with an a API uh, first approach. If you see most of the startup uh, in India, we have, uh, uh, okay, let's take an again, uh, Airbnb, uh, Airbnb. Uh, we take an example of Uber. We take an example of an, uh, uh, grab taxis in Singapore. Uh, we take all these examples, okay? So these are built on top of, many of the applications are built on top of navigation. Navigation and navigation, they don't build that uh, maps from the scratch, but they use an uh, Google Cloud uh, Map API. I mean, Google uh, Maps, they use that API along with their applications. So this API itself will give that advantage to use functionality within their applications by using APIs. And uh, cloud is the best place where you can manage your APIs, where you can build, develop, and manage your APIs. So you have an uh, approach. Uh, so mainframe modernization is one of the challenges that are coming in today's market, banking, and financial sectors. Uh, they want to uh, they want to modernize the mainframe application safely and quickly into containerization in, in your Kubernetes environment uh, using an automated code uh, refactoring toolset with advanced application discovery and insight capabilities and prospective guidelines from Google experts. Uh, we can build that uh, here in our organization. So uh, what's the benefit of go moving your migrating uh, workload to this? We can get that scale, okay? And we can take advantage of multiple, uh, you know, open source programming languages. 
okay uh, innovate without a constraint using the most scalable and reliable managed services we can also move our application into managed services or application what we have so those are some of the uh, application modernization when we talk about we talk we take you can take an advantage of multi cloud applications cloud native applications uh, your serverless approach your devops tools and services uh, your api management products like apache uh, api gee apache and uh, your cloud endpoints can give you that advantage okay so that's about your application modernization let's talk some of the business application platform uh, that can uh, <coughs> that can uh, easily move to the cloud unlock legacy application using apis okay you can use tools like apache what i was telling open api specification we can make that uh, you know legacy application available in a cloud or this by using apis or extend and modernize legacy application along with the new cloud services speed up to market delivery dynamic customer experience all that we have and power developers and partners <coughs> uh, is what our motive and we can go that open new business channels using apis as as we told earlier we did talk about big data and machine learning uh, artificial intelligence which will help you uh, to uh, leverage new customers okay so today's market for uh, this pandemic is all on uh, most of the uh, markets or most of the uh, you know businesses surviving on the internet and that's the power of your cloud when we can uh, <clears throat> take those opportunities new business channels attract and empower an ecosystem of developers and partners so uh, drive more adoption and consumption of your apis generate new revenue sources monitor and manage apis to measure success of what we have uh, business application platforms what you can have it so banking is on cloud now so this is on more workload business application platform simplifies and accelerate secure delivery of open banking compliant apis okay so most of the cloud uh, cloud platform meets this regulatory and compliance requirement beta payment gateways uh, which support pci dss compliance uh, or maybe beat and hip trust your healthcare uh, beat and uh, insurance your uh, hipaa uh, your encryption soc1 soc2 soc3 uh, iso standard 14000 uh, x uh, which all so all the cloud providers do uh, do compile with these regulatory and gdpr standards okay so and they also uh, uh, it's a open banking environment are now suitable on the cloud because most of the cloud do provide those uh, uh, compliance and regulatory requirements so healthcare it's easily uh, connect healthcare providers and app developers to build uh, fhir api based uh, digital services where it uh, reduces uh, no reduce risk during uh, care transactions and deliver patient centric digital services improve chronic condition management all that is one of the uh, so why i'm giving this examples these are the leading uh, you know organization or leading uh, platform uh, or a leading businesses which want to uh, which are already in a cloud or eager to move to the cloud in today's market okay so what are the business opportunities if we say they are based on machine learnings okay so here are a good number of machine learnings you can see in today's market so we have uh, we have businesses uh, where uh, they take order using a bot uh, where the customer can speak and that converts to a text and the bot replies back with the uh, text to speech options which can help you there uh, it's not just about speech to text when the customer requests something we also can identify his emotions whether he is anger whether he is polite whether he is rude whether he is disgust with the service all that i can do it with the help of natural language services or in some cases i can categorize my text into my categorize my uh, my text into various categories now uh, there is a customer who was uh, looking for an um, you know loan uh based on his uh, email or based on his text messages i can uh, classify that uh, 
you know text into a loan that is a banking uh, that is a mortgage loan or an uh, business loan or automobile loan and so on with the help of the text and uh, even in some cases <clears throat> even i can uh, in some cases using natural language api it will help me to identify entities within a given text entities like place person and so on okay so uh, we uh, we been in uh, one of the retailers uh, what we are designing and the platform we used a vision api to identify the emotion of a customer when he purchases a particular uh, item so we were able to identify what the customer was in joy or is disgust with our service so we uh, we we uh, no uh, means uh, the retailer service the retailer service used those inputs and try to improve the staff behavior and to uh, improve the more feedback mechanism and the customer satisfaction with that vision apis again uh, nowadays most of telecom and banking environments they are reducing a uh, lot number of jobs almost like uh, in a uh, report it says like in us <clears throat> they'll be reducing some around 2 million jobs uh, on the banking environment where most of the things will be automated using an uh, using a dialog flow that's a bot bot will be answering your queries bot will be taking your uh, this thing uh, a bot you want to develop a bot you will be having something called as dialog flow so all this is nothing but a machine learning models if you want to build your own model we have auto ml which can help you to automatically build your model without the need of coding anything <clears throat> so there are various things in place specializations uh, whereas the today's uh, market need these approaches on a machine learning to work this approach on a machine learning uh, to build uh, your uh, to build your today's current business uh, application requirements okay so we did uh, till now we talked the capabilities of an application infrastructure and a uh, machine learning ai okay so all that is true all that is built and managed to secure one thing that's your database so what database uh, okay how your data and where it is stored how securely it's stored is a questions every customer every organization every government sector will ask you that okay so what are the database options what are the, its capabilities you have in today's cloud so cloud gives you wide variety of databases okay that include relational database that include sql no sql database or uh, requires and uh, we talk about uh, relational database we get various flavors in market mysql postgres sql server oracle Uh, IBM DB2. So all are relational database. Okay. So uh, it also uh, gives you other uh, NoSQL database like your document database. Your what we have, we have uh, you have document database and uh, we have other kind of database we can use it. So uh, not only data, but we do provide service where you can uh, securely migrate your data. to the cloud by using database modernization and migration okay now if you ask me what is current uh, uh, market database we'll talk about heterogeneous migration uh, move of your old guard vendors to enterprise class os is uh, compatible database move from proprietary database to open source my like mysql postgres move from traditional database to cloud native okay and take advantage of uh, something called as new sql a database which can help you to for both your analytical and uh, transactional workloads move from one cloud to another cloud when you have a open source uh, database okay so these are the things what we are capable and the cloud uh, uh, you know the cloud migration and modernization help you to move your data so this is one of the bigger uh, business opportunities that is your smart analytics so what are the business opportunities uh, we talk about uh, okay so you you want to uh, you want to analyze you want to predict uh, the coming uh, market trend you should have a data in place okay so nowadays if you go for any retailers you will be having the products on a display which are sold most than the products which are sold less 
okay so uh, you uh, when you you go to any retailers okay so they work on this uh, smart analytics where they take data driven decisions okay for that you should have a better storage place okay and to do your big data analytics and machine learning you require a better storage where it can support an a petabyte scale or internet scale of data storage services and you have a, a data which are queryable in the form of data warehousing data warehouse modernization on the cloud is one of the uh, easiest and less challenging uh, uh, compared to your on premises solve for today's most challenging demands and seamless scale your business with advanced and multi uh, multi cloud capabilities built in on your cloud environment so uh, we we have an uh, queryable data or data which is fine tuned and stored in a data warehouse but the data which comes or not always fine tuned but we should have a uh, storage service where you can store our data and that's your data lake data lakes are capable to store your large volume of diverse uh, full uh, fidelity data maybe your raw data also and you can it gives you uh, you know this most of the storage buckets object storage gives you these services then all this service what you store okay what is store you create a pipeline and you store the data in a tunable format and that is used for your marketing analytics where you can you can have an uh, supercharge of your market with actionable insights gain a clear and comprehensive picture of an customer journey predict outcome and create more personalized experience with this uh, database capability you can take uh, intelligent uh, you know uh, you can make use of some of the bi tools business intelligent tools like uh, in uh, azure we have uh, a power bi in google we have looker and uh, dataflow and uh, uh, other we can also integrate with qlake tableau and other uh, connectors we can have to connect to our database and we can see more in you know, a visualized format <coughs> okay so stream analytics is one of the uh, current uh, requirement in today's market uh, streaming analytics where you get the data in live like stock exchange data where you have to bring the data in just in live process the data analyze and show the market trends in the uh, dashboards and uh, that is uh, one of the easiest and uh, you know most efficiently used uh, streaming analytics is done on the cloud uh, here maybe all the cloud does provide that okay so here the security uh, so all the cloud provide do provide those security that Uh, required to meet the compliance and regulatory requirements okay security analytics and operations use chronicle store and continuous analyze petabytes of secure telemetry of fixed price with a zero management uh, headaches we can go with your uh, cloud security so uh, you can also use web and app security today's uh, major demand will be uh, protection against ddos attacks intrusion detections okay secure workload encrypting in transit all the cloud providers do provide so that it can protect your application and api against threats and fraud help ensure availability and compliance requirement <clears throat> so uh, so all the cloud providers do provide this security in place so at the end uh, we have uh, another 4 minutes and we can take a q and a in the last 10 minutes okay <clears throat> okay so here here we have uh, uh, here we have some of the uh, stories from retailers okay uh, here you can read it we want to be a positive force behind millions of people every day if you are going to keep doing that we need a cloud technology that focus on experience that's elegant simple and adaptive that works uh, locus in again we have financial service story your goldman sachs as a goldman sachs do uh, do about scaling its our own business and how much more intense that risk management activity would become in the world so one of the google cloud was an obvious choice you can use it which which they help them for uh, overcome uh, global uh, 
uh, by diverse massive computing power and near infinity scale, Google Cloud is helping global firm focus on new challenges and uh, involve quickly and deliver new innovations. So in media and entertainment industry, uh, if you see here uh, in, the, in MLB, okay. So we are uh, excited to strengthen this partnership by consolidating MLB infrastructure on Google Cloud and uh, incorporating Google's world-class machine learning technologies to provide personalized and impressive fan experience. We couldn't have picked a better technology partnered across and deliver stream cloud computing and machine learning. And on healthcare, so this is some of the words and your 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 government and organizations uh, sector. Uh, I'm just running through the slides, so we have less time. Okay, any questions are welcome. Uh, we'll take the question. The forum is open for uh, the forum is open for next ten minutes. You can please ask questions. So there's yeah. a one. Yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah, uh, Shubha, thanks. Thanks very much for this uh, introduction and uh, very elaborate discussion and explanation on the cloud technologies, cloud computing and the digital transformation uh, concepts. Thank you. Of course. Uh, so uh, participants, you know, I just want to address so Reliant Vision per se. I just wanted to highlight about our company's, uh, you know, uh, forays into these areas. So we have been for the past seven years, we've been do this, doing this activity. So we are a global IT company and we specialize in providing end-to-end -end IT software solutions, uh, particularly as Shubha was also mentioning about all these technologies. Um, and uh, we have the domain experts and the technology expertise in providing the you know, IT solutions for uh, our niche service uh, areas. So our niche is basically, as uh, Shiva was explaining, explaining cloud computing, uh, digital transformation, uh, AI, artificial intelligence, business intelligence and analytics, DevOps, and uh, of course, the robotic process automation. So within this service offerings, we have uh, experience of working with uh, many of the clients uh, worldwide. So some of the clients we have from the UAE region, the US region and UK region. And uh, these clients are, uh, you know, coming from different industry verticals. So majority, I would say, uh, we have a good client base in the financial services domain. Financial services, of course, we have clients from the retail, automobile, manufacturing, and uh, insurance and these kind of sectors. So overall, what I would like to say is, uh, we have the domain expertise, we have the guys who worked in each of these industry segments. Uh, who understand the business processes, the business challenges of each of this domain. So as you know, the insurance company per se has its own complexities, has own, its own challenges, and they require the IT systems for different reasons. Similarly, a retail company, similarly, a uh, alternative investment or investment management company. So they have a set business processes and they rely upon uh, IT systems for different reasons per se. So we understand that we have the domain expertise uh, the guys who work for each of this industry vertical for about 10, 15 years. And we also have the technology expertise, uh, you know, to build the IT systems, which can uh, help these clients overcome their business challenges and achieve their uh, business successes. And as rightly Shubha has explained today, you know, the cloud computing and digital transformation is the key. The enterprises today does not have any other option other than getting on to the cloud or embracing these kind of technologies to be competitive in the market today. So with this closing comments, I leave it open for any question and answers. So any uh, information or any clarifications you would require, any questions, uh, we are here. We can answer you at this point in time, please. Okay, it says one question from Mani Krishna. Uh, is it a good option to use on premises and cloud together? Say I have billions of data to uh, to be processed. Uh, should I move my entire data to cloud then process it? Or if I can, uh, will end up in using millions of dollars since. See, uh, one thing I'd say, if you already invested in your, uh, you know, storage and you're storing your data in the, in the, on, -pre in the on prem, good enough. Okay, if you're thinking, uh, to process the data, the think about the compute power required to process your data. Cloud is the cheapest uh, if you don't already you don't already have an 
uh, uh, you know you don't already have in compute on your on prem in that case cloud is the cheapest because you only process the data and once you process the data you get the output and uh, that is the end then you don't have to uh, you only process then give up those resources so it will be cheaper for you but whereas you have to do it on on prem you have to acquire those machine you have a cap capital expenditure that will be more costly after the job is done you are continuously uh, processing your data then you have to look at few parameters there okay so then there was the other user who asked this question to maintain retainency or availability instead of tr do you have any concept to use in a cloud yeah in a cloud we can also establish our own uh, uh, retainency as we see that so cloud gives you uh, three kinds of services one is infrastructure as a service platform as a service and a software as a service in case of platform as a service and a software as a service the retainency will be taken care by uh, uh, cloud provider when it comes for infrastructure as a service we have to design uh, we have to deploy uh, the retainency we have to design and deploy the retainency so it's uh, again uh, we have to, there is, there is uh, but most of the platform as a service serverless approach will already have retainency in place Any other questions? Hey, this is Mani. Uh, it's a good session. I have a question regarding the disaster recovery that you were discussing. So as you said, the cloud will provide you a disaster recovery. But uh, if I increase my data centers, uh, uh, I need to maintain the same data in other data, same data in deep multiple data centers. So is there any way to reduce uh, the uh, actual size of data in the uh, in the alternate uh, data center, you have to compress and you have to keep it. Okay, uh, so when you talk about redundancy, you talk about cold backup, you talk about hot backup, cold backup, and you talk about this. When you say hot backup, you should have exact configuration in each of the data centers. When you say hot, uh, hot backup, uh, bigger part when you say hot backup, you should have exact configuration in each of the site. When you have an uh, RTO uh, more, you have like four hours RTO, or you have that. Uh, time to recovery. Uh, you can what you can do. You can go and uh, set up. You can go and uh, set up an hot backup where you can keep your data, only the data in a compressed format in other cloud. When you have an outrage, you have an uh, uh, RTO uh, recover time. You can build that infrastructure back. Okay, within no time. Oh. Okay. So that is what it depends on what strategy you use. How critical is your uh, workload depends on that. Mm -hmm. So it's based on the criticality of application. You yeah, it's, it's based on the criticality of the application and the recovery time. What you have it. Okay. And when I move it to a cloud, do you suggest me to go for a real time processing or a batch processing? So Depends again. Uh, mm -hmm. Now let's say you have workload like stock exchange, IOT. Mm -hmm. You go with the real time processing. Mm -hmm. You have reporting, weekly report, monthly report. You go with the batch processing. Uh, so my current organization, I was using my project list, like I, I have a data in a DB2 or Oracle. It's mm -hmm. an Oracle. And my uh, my downstream feeding feeding application is APIs. So okay. In this situation, I should go from, uh, I, usually I should go to a, a real-time processing. Mm -hmm. yes. So mm -hmm. in this case, uh, yeah, in this case, what is happening, like I, I even an API asks for a history data, I cannot put that data in cloud, and at the same time, I need to do a processing of real time. So, mm -hmm. how do I leverage this? So, I need to browse some history data. The process should happen in cloud. Mm -hmm. and have you in, have you heard about uh, big data products like Apache Beam? Uh, we are using actually the Kafka, and we are loading it into yeah. a Cosmos DB. From there, uh, uh, the API hit those uh, uh, those Cosmos collections, and from there, they are getting it. Yeah. So, uh, in case of uh, open source, uh, we can use Kafka. Uh, we can use, uh, you know, uh, something called as Apache Beam, which can work both on batch processing and stream processing at the same time. For batch processing, it takes a historical data. For stream processing, it takes the data from Kafka. It processes the data and it can store it in a required uh, 
API it can liberate to replied uh, Cosmos DB or any DB it can store it, and the APIs can pick your data from that. Okay. Uh, try using uh, something like stream processing using Apache Beam. It's an open source. I'm telling you, if you go for Google Cloud specific, it's a data flow. Uh, if you go for uh, 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 Kinesis is one that is used in uh, uh, your uh, Amazon, AWS, and so on. Yeah, actually, my requirement is like we are moving from the traditional Ab Initio ETL process to the cloud. So we are using the Go language and microservices to build this entire infrastructure in a cloud with Kubernetes. As you said, like we are using containerizations to do this. So we are creating, building the images and running it. So that's the reason I asked. Yeah, it's a very good session here. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Answers my question. Yeah. yeah, we are at top of the hour, remaining two minutes. Uh, uh, if no questions, uh, happy to. Uh, I have one question Please. regarding the disaster recovery setup. If my RDS is sitting on a Virginia region or uh, a database, how do I set up uh, like the disaster recovery is a one scenario, but it will cost uh, if I do the replication. But instead of replication, which is the other way which I can use, uh, instead of two databases uh, running uh, multiple region, uh, which is the other way which I can use, just shut down the database, other one, uh, just like failover concept. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do we so have again, a concept in AWS which I can retrieve the data if my uh, East yeah, region in, goes wrong? In case of relational database, we have, uh, you know, uh, uh, only failover can be configured. Okay, that's one thing. In case of this, again, what is your recovery time here? Okay, recovery time is four hours. Four hours. Four hours is good enough. You can take a backup of data. We can restore the data. That's one you can think about. Rather than replication, if your recovery time is four hours, well, good enough for our uh, restore the data, right? Four hours, if it is 2000 GB or more than that, then it is not possible for RDS. Yeah, so in that uh, case, I can use backup and AWS backup is one of the options, which is I can go with 24 hours. Okay. If it is only few hours, uh, instead of replication, do we have any other concept, which I mean to say? No, uh, one concept you talk about, talk about replication, the other concept you can talk about backing up. These are the two options what you have. Okay, that answers. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, Mani here, I have one more quick question. Please. Uh, Yes, we, uh, we are, as I said, like uh, we are using a Kafka. So we are using a converter to like Attunity or uh, IBM provided CDC tool to convert uh -huh. the uh -huh. relational database to a messaging queue in Kafka. But uh, uh -huh. what is happening like when, when I say as data centers, when when one data center is down, when I when I up my another data center, the, the time lag between two data centers is making my messages to be like uh, I, I am uh, I, I, around 100k of messages were lost when I switch from one data center to other. So okay. this making us too difficult to use this switching between data centers. Is there any other better tool that you suggest us like how a cloud yeah, will? If, if Kafka is not there, we have equivalent uh, you know services. If you talk about Google Cloud Platform, they use something called as PubSub. Okay, uh, PubSub is highly reliable and uh, it's it's not very region specific. It will actually uh, create its uh, message. Uh, okay, it actually creates. It's a highly reliable and scalable uh, messaging services. Okay, I can go back to I can go back uh, two hours back and read my same message again. No, 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 no. No, uh, so messages if you already it it is ingested. If the message is already there in the topic, no problem. Okay. It gives you up to seven days of retention period. Okay. And okay. each message of size of 10 MB. Okay. Okay. 10 okay. MB. Each, yeah. each, okay. each message size of 10 MB. You, you just search for cloud pops up, which gives yeah. you a similar functionality of Kafka, and you can see its capabilities. Cloud pops up. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So if you see in this, what are the equivalent product of cloud PubSub? Yeah, we have here in Amazon, we have uh, SQS, uh, Amazon MQ, and uh, Azure, we have this service, service bus relay, bus topic, and bus queues you have, uh, event streaming what we have in IBM, uh, that's what we have here.
okay uh, thank you for your time uh, ladies and gentlemen thanks uh, and uh, thank you team let's stop now yeah sanjeev yeah. pranay uh, please take it sandeep pranay yeah. yeah yeah thank you thank you very much uh, thank you very much shubha and thank you everyone for joining us today and uh, please feel free to get in touch with us in case you need any uh, information or have any question we'll be more than happy to provide you the support okay uh, thanks again and uh, looking forward to see you soon thank you thank all thank you so much and thanks everyone thank you everyone bye thank you all